Brothers and sisters, some of you will call me a date setter. I, uh, I really don't care. I believe that uh, God will let us know when it's almost upon us. I think we will know. I think the day of the rapture, we will know. But I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord. I was listening to somebody this morning who was talking about something I'd heard other people talk about, that the blood moon tetrad was, you know, on the feasts in 2014 and 2015 of Passover, then Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles, then Passover and Sukkot. This repetition, to me, it's like God is almost screaming something at us. It's like he's really highlighting something. Jesus was the Passover. He was the Passover lamb. Many of us have been thinking that the Feast of Trumpets is when we go. But a few others have also entertained the idea that we actually might, from this point on, uh, begin at the other end of the menorah, at the Feast of Tabernacles, and maybe move our, you know, work our way inward. Or we could go to the Feast of Tabernacles, as some are saying, and then go back to the Feast of Trumpets and then, oh, sorry, then, yeah, the Feast of Trumpets and then the Day of Atonement, and then continue on with the, the um, um, Feast of Tabernacles again. See, I don't think we're on the menorah because this is an invisible event. It's invisible. So I don't think it appears on the menorah when we think it's going to be. I could be wrong. So if we jump straight to the Feast of Tabernacles, that is Sukkot, and they have all these little tents called sukkahs, I think. Don't quote me on that. And it's a seven-day feast. Does seven days sound familiar? We're having a seven-year slash seven-day feast in heaven with Jesus. Um, and we're in these little sukkahs, these little tents. I feel at the moment the rapture-ready bride of Christ is in their own little tents in the wilderness, each one of us. Each one of us is doing this alone for the most part. Some of us have husbands and wives who are on board and rapture-ready, but many have lost their families, uh, you know, to their faith. They've uh, lost communication with their families because of their faith and they're doing it alone. They're preparing for the rapture alone. Uh, so maybe we are waiting in these little tabernacles already. I don't know. But the interesting thing, what really jumped out at me when I was watching one of these videos about Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot, it's like God repeated that on purpose. Jesus repeated that blood moon warning or sign, road sign, if you like, on purpose. He repeated it. Passover, Sukkot, Passover, Sukkot. Okay, okay, I can see the pattern, Lord. Now, what do we do with that? Jesus was the Passover lamb. I think it's saying that we are the ingathering, which is, uh, it's, not, it's not a harvest as such, not a harvest of um, wheat or, or any food that I'm aware of. Can, correct me if I'm wrong. So what is it a harvest of, if not souls? So I tend to think, very, very, very strongly that Tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles, is the time. And I think it's this year. So if I'm a date setter, if you think I'm a date setter, if I am a date setter, I will cop that sweet. 
because the Lord does say that he does nothing without letting his people know first. And he's coming as a thief in the night to those who are not prepared. They're not sitting up and waiting. They're not aware that he is going to come. We are. So it's not going to be that great a shock. We won't know the exact moment, maybe, or the exact hour. But we know the season and we can even, I believe, don't quote me, I believe we can know the day when we get so close to it. And of course, 717 is screaming at us. Everywhere I go, I see 717. And I'm not the only one. So what's the big earth-shaking thing here? Like I say, it's just what I have observed. And I haven't heard anyone say this, but I feel it in my spirit. I told my husband, and yeah, it's like the lights went on with him there too. What else was the blood moon tetrad telling us? Apart from the fact that they are blood moons, which heralds problems for Israel always. There were four of them. It was a blood moon tetrad, which means four. To me, it's saying Passover Sukkot, Passover Sukkot. This is Jesus and then you guys, <laughs> Jesus and you guys. He, he can, can you see the pattern here? When is it? Any good road sign will tell you what you are looking for, what you are heading towards, and tell you how far in the distance it is. Any good road sign. Although we've all struck signs that say, you know, such and such is ahead, but it doesn't tell you how far or where to turn or anything, and then you drive on and you can't find any continuation of the information, and you're lost. But a good road sign will tell you what is ahead and how far ahead it is. I believe the Tetrad told us it is in four years. Not four years from now, but four years from the last blood moon of the Tetrad, the 28th of September 2015. And that was the Feast of Trumpets, when we got that last blood moon, when we saw it. But it wasn't talking about the Feast of Trumpets. It appeared at that time, but it was talking about the future. We remember the Passover lamb is Jesus and we look toward our redemption occurring in the rapture at the Feast of Tabernacles. Four years on from 2015. I've also heard it said that, uh, where was it in this? I'm not good with scripture and verse and memory. I've got so many diseases, it's unbelievable, and my, me my memory is affected. But there is a scripture that says that he will not tarry, but then he will tarry. It's like he'll be on time and then he will just wait a little while longer. Maybe some of you know where that scripture is. Um, and it's like that, okay? We've had, just had the Feast of Trumpets and here we are. It's going to be a little while longer. A lot of people are saying it's 717, which is the seventh month of the Jewish calendar. Um, and the 17th day, which is the 16th of October here. Uh, there's just so much that is going on this month. There was a lot going on last month, but I think there's almost as much going on this month um, prophetically, especially when you look at the wars that are happening um, everywhere, India, Pakistan, um, just everywhere, uh, of course, the Middle East, and Trump pulling troops out of Syria really looks like it's just opening the way for the Gog of Magog, Gog and Magog war. Um, it just looks like it's all about to burst open, plus the um, a representative of the Vatican has just met with Israelis again. They're talking about peace again. And I think this is going to be the peace deal. I'm not sure if it's got anything to do with Trump's peace deal. But um, I don't know. I'm just looking at all sorts of people who could be the Antichrist. It may be Macron because he's, he's saying, look, if Trump doesn't pull this together, I've got a peace deal that I can, you know, Put on the table sort of thing so we are living in very very interesting times stuff is happening every day i can't keep up with it my poor little brain can't cope with it 
But I really think that God gave us a huge hint with those blood moon, blood moons in the blood, blood rude, <laughs> blood moon tetrad, the four of them. It's saying stuff is coming for Israel, problems are coming for Israel, but it's also speaking to the bride that Jesus atoned on the cross for our sins at the time of Passover. He was our Passover lamb. And now he's coming for us at the Feast of Tabernacles, four years on from the end of that tetrad. I'd like your comments. Please don't be um, nasty. Please don't troll me. I am not in the mood to uh, tolerate it. I have a huge, huge, huge heart for souls, but I've got no tolerance of human frailty uh, when it comes to sin, when it comes to being nasty, when it comes to taking offence, when it comes to lashing out. I've just got no tolerance. So I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm fallible. I'm an old lady. Um, I've had enough. I'm ready to go home to be with my Lord Jesus. Now, I want to tell you this, rapture ready, bride, yes, I do say rapture ready because you have to be repented up. I don't care what anyone says. If you've just said a prayer once, that will not save you. You have to be in close relationship with Jesus Christ. Repentance is all about relationship. It's not works. No works can save us. But if we fall away from relationship with Jesus Christ, we can lose our salvation. I'm not ever going to believe in this once saved, always saved stuff, saying that, you know, you said a prayer, then you are secure and all your past, present and future sins are forgiven. I don't believe that. I believe repentance is key. It's not works, it's relationship and it's key. And it keeps us on the right track and it helps us to die to self and to overcome. There has to be a change in the heart of the believer for the believer to be truly saved. I am praying for everybody who listens to this, everyone who comments, um, positive or negative. Um, I want to encourage you to stay close to Jesus, inhabit him, and he will inhabit you. He inhabits the praises of his people. Enter his kingdom, enter his throne room with praises put on the garment of praise for heaviness to stay close to him sing praises sing songs open up your bible and look at all the psalms and all the praises and speak them out loud and praise your your jesus your lord thank him for everything he's done for you thank him for his atonement on the cross he needs to hear this he needs to hear this from his beloved bride what husband doesn't need assurance from his beloved bride Get close to him. Tell him you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Sing praises to him and thank him for his amazing gift of the atonement on the cross. You need to have your lamps full of the oil of the Holy Spirit. And entering his gates with praise and thanksgiving is the best way to really remain full of the Holy Spirit. God bless you as you ponder these things. God bless you and I hope to see you in the air very, very, very soon. Maranatha, Lord Jesus.